The purpose of this instructional video is to introduce you to the clinical assessment of patients who have a possible IgE-mediated allergy to a medication, otherwise known as an immediate hypersensitivity reaction. We will be using a case of penicillin testing as our main example. The first step in evaluation is confirmation of the drug allergy history. The history is an essential step to be able to identify what type of sequence of tests are needed to investigate the reported drug allergy and what conclusions will be drawn from the tests. Important drug allergy history items include details related to the drug, such as dose, duration, indication, and when the reaction took place. Additional key features related to symptoms and signs are important. Finally, the treatment and resolution of the reaction are helpful to understand the severity and the sequelae of the reaction. A list of all the drugs that the patient was taking at the time and is taking currently should also be documented when possible. When taking a complex drug allergy history on patients who are getting testing, it is important to organize the drugs being evaluated by history, including the severity and type of treatment received. As the testing performed in clinic progresses, adding in the testing results, your interpretation of the testing, and final recommendations can provide a narrative record that is easily interpretable by patients and other healthcare providers. Immediate hypersensitivity skin testing consisting of prick and interdermal skin testing is only indicated for patients who had reactions that were potentially IgE mediated. This includes patients with itching, hives, flushing, angioedema, and anaphylaxis as well as other symptoms. This testing can also be performed in patients with unknown allergy histories but who may be very nervous about receiving an oral challenge. Skin testing without a history of a reaction should not be done. Immediate testing such as a skin prick and interdermal testing interpreted at 15 to 20 minutes is not appropriate for reactions such as drug fever, acute interstitial nephritis, drug-induced liver injury, eosinophilia, and hemolytic anemia. For testing of selective severe cutaneous adverse reactions such as drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms, please see the accompanying delayed hypersensitivity testing video for more details related to diagnostic testing for delayed reactions. Once you have the sense that immediate hypersensitivity skin testing is warranted, be sure to perform a targeted vital signs and physical examination. Ideally, you should document or note any pre-existing skin rashes and the condition of the patient's skin, such as any easy bruising or dermatographism that might be present. Skin testing should be completed between two and four weeks and less than six months after the initial reaction. Confirm that the patient is in their usual state of health or close to it and that they have taken all necessary and regular medications on the day of planned testing except for antihistamines. For skin testing, the patient should not have taken an antihistamine in the last five days. Tricyclic antidepressants and antipsychotics can be potent antihistamines and may need to be held for a period longer than five days before testing. However, you can still do a skin test as long as there is a positive histamine response. Therefore, it is recommended to check a histamine control before canceling the test, even in a patient who has recently taken an antihistamine. The patient should continue to take beta blockers. In the case of a history of anaphylaxis, a patient should not have taken a beta blocker in the past eight hours because beta blockade may inhibit the action of epinephrine during anaphylaxis. Depending on the patient's comorbidities and the allergy history, a baseline peak flow measurement might be indicated to allow for comparison in the event of any respiratory symptoms. We will now demonstrate two procedures needed to assess for IgE-mediated drug allergies, immediate hypersensitivity skin testing, and drug challenge. Once you have determined that immediate hypersensitivity skin testing is indicated, the next step is to identify your testing reagents. Penicillin is the most common drug allergy reported worldwide and is therefore the most common drug tested. It is also the only drug for which validated and commercially available testing reagents have been developed. 
The general principles for skin testing to assess an immediate reaction to a drug can be applied for any drug as long as a non-irritating concentration for prick and interdermal testing can be determined. A non-irritating concentration is a concentration of drug that was previously shown not to cause non-specific irritation when tested in healthy controls and non-allergic patients. If there is a need to test a drug allergy that is uncommon, the first step is to find the non-irritating concentration from a published protocol, preferably from your country of origin, since the drug available in one country and its excipients may differ from those available in another country. Professional society practice parameters or drug allergy experts from national and international societies may have these details and can also provide expert consensus. The closer to a reaction that testing is performed, the higher the chance of capturing a true skin test positive. It is estimated that of patients with IgE-mediated reactions, up to 10% or more can lose their skin test reactivity per year. Currently, benzyl penicill oil polylysine, also known as PPL or prepen, is the only FDA-approved testing reagent available in the United States. In Europe and other countries, major and minor determinant products are available from Dieter Laboratorio Pharmaceutico. Assessment of penicillin allergies has been increasingly recognized as important to improve patient care and decrease antibiotic resistance. In the U.S., a minimum of the major determinant, prepen, is used for skin testing. However, immediate allergies to penicillin are also evaluated with prepen, diluted penicillin G, and ampicillin. Once you have the protocol and the NIC, identify sources of drug availability in your area. In some institutions, the pharmacy may be very involved in the process of finding a non-irritating concentration and preparing the product and dilutions needed for skin testing reagents for use in immediate testing. If you are making dilutions with your own clinic, you must have a standard operating procedure that will ensure the complete accuracy of this process in diluting reagents generally 1 to 10, 1 to 100, and 1 to 1,000 concentrations. Materials needed for mixing and diluting include vials of sterile, albumin, and saline, and needles for mixing. An automatic mixer can be useful to ensure the drug is properly dissolved. Serial dilutions are performed in order to get the correct concentrations for skin testing. All reagents used should be labeled to indicate the specific dilution. Regardless of whether the reagents are prepared in your pharmacy or in the clinic, samples should be meticulously checked before testing. In addition to the testing reagents, the following is a checklist for immediate testing for drugs. Trained staff, positive and negative controls, skin prick applicators for epidermal prick testing, tuberculin skin testing syringes for interdermal testing, a permanent marker to indicate what is being tested on the skin, alcohol swabs, a reaction measurement tool, anaphylaxis kit for management of allergic reactions. In your anaphylaxis kit, you should include epinephrine, 1 over 1,000. If you will draw up epinephrine, then include the dosing for different weights inside the kit and easily accessible. If you are using an epinephrine auto-injector, Make sure you have the right doses for both pediatric and adult patients. Epinephrine is ideally given in the lateral thigh and can be given through the patient's clothing if you have an auto-injector. When epinephrine is drawn for patients when the thigh cannot be exposed, the deltoid is an alternative location. Antihistamines such as diphenhydramine and a longer-acting non-sedating antihistamine like cetirizine or fexofenadine should also be included in your kit. Albuterol, steroids, and H2 blockers are useful for adjunctive treatment. Check the kit before each test to make sure nothing is missing or expired. Any drug which is used should be immediately replaced. Although all sites performing immediate hypersensitivity testing should have access to a similar kit, anaphylaxis resulting from drug testing is uncommon. If your clinic routinely performs testing in patients on beta blockers, your anaphylaxis kit should have glucagon. Now let's turn our attention to skin testing. 
The first step of skin testing is the epicutaneous or skin prick test. Use an alcohol swab to clean the skin. Once the alcohol has dried, use a permanent marker to mark where each reagent will be placed. Because most negative tests are going to be completely invisible, the markings help you remember where you put the skin test. The placement of testing reagents doesn't matter, but it is best to place the histamine furthest from the drug reagents because the flare can bleed into the next test if a patient has a strong reaction to the histamine. Using a prick device, place the reagents on the volar surface of the lower arm and use a positive control such as a histamine 1 mg milliliter and a negative control such as saline or glycerin. The motion of the skin prick is either a press and slight twist or shallow scooping. The goal is to lightly break the skin. After all the tests are placed, wait 15 minutes for the reading. Please let your patient know that there will be itching and redness at the site of the histamine control, but that no scratching is allowed. If all of the skin prick reagents are negative, then it is time to move on to the intradermal step. If any reagent is positive on prick testing, as is seen here for ampicillin indicated by the letter A, then that reagent would be excluded from intradermal testing. However, intradermal testing for the remaining reagents would proceed because they were negative. Of note, a pattern of penicillin skin testing where there is a selective positive testing to ampicillin or amoxicillin is more commonly encountered in Europe compared to the U.S. Moving on to the next step of intradermal testing, we first prep the skin like we did before. But for this testing, we use an intradermal needle, the same type that we use commonly for TB testing, to place 0.02 milliliters of each reagent. The most reproducible method is to fill the syringe with test solution and then expel the excess fluid to obtain exactly 0.02 milliliters. While an intradermal saline should always be placed, placing of an intradermal histamine can be reserved for cases where the skin prick histamine test was insufficient or negative. Tests are placed right under the epidermis and into the dermis on the extensor surface of the upper arms. This should create a small bleb like this. After 15 minutes, the test is again ready to be read. After ensuring we can interpret the test, a histamine was positive either on skin prick or intradermal test, and the saline is negative. We can read the intradermal tests. Tests are read separately after the prick testing and intradermal testing. First ensure that you have adequate controls and do not have a negative histamine test as is shown here. The histamine test should be clearly positive. Common reasons for a negative histamine test include inappropriate placement of the test or inhibition by medications, often antihistamines. Chronically ill patients may not respond appropriately. Then make sure that you do not have a positive saline or glycerin test as shown here. The saline control should be clearly negative. Common reasons for positive saline include dermatographia and chronic urticaria. Currently, for most drugs, a positive test will meet criteria for positivity by published criteria such as wheel of at least 5 mm with flare greater than wheel or wheel greater than 3 mm from baseline with a flare at least 5 mm greater than baseline. Measurement of the size of the wheel and the flare should consider the widest diameter at each site when a positive is identified such as this patient with positive intradermal cefazolin testing at 1 mg per milliliter and a history of intraoperative anaphylaxis. Let's return to our patient from before who had skin prick positive testing to ampicillin. The patient had further positive intradermal testing to penicillin G, as shown here. In the presence of such positive testing, the patient is presumed allergic even though the positive predictive value is not precisely known for most drugs. Even for patients determined to be allergic, it may still be useful to evaluate further potentially cross-reactive medications to identify medications that can be determined safe for use. Here is an example of positive skin testing in a pediatric patient. This patient had a history of pre-existing alpha-gal allergy and observed anaphylaxis when vaccines were administered. 
Skin testing was positive to gelatin containing vaccines, MMR, and varicella, along with gelatin. In this case, testing was placed on the back due to the young age of the child. Non-specific irritated blebs that do not enlarge during intradermal testing can be normal in many patients and are typically not surrounded by erythema. If the saline control is appropriately negative, then these should not be interpreted as positive. After the skin testing is complete and documented, wipe the testing area down with an alcohol swab. Application of topical diphenhydramine or hydrocortisone to the positive histamine control and other positive tests can help relieve itching, although these symptoms will resolve soon after testing without intervention. Negative benzyl penicillin and major determinate intradermal results are required before proceeding to an oral challenge. When testing is negative or selectively negative, the next step is an ingestion or drug challenge. The drug challenge is a critical step to prove drug tolerance since the negative predictive value of skin testing is less than 100%, even for penicillin skin testing. For drugs beyond penicillin, the drug challenge is the gold standard, most important step since there is no established negative predictive value of skin testing. What is needed for a drug challenge, appropriate doses and preparations of the drug, and an anaphylaxis kit. A drug challenge involves giving the drug in an observed setting. While the challenge may be timed immediately following negative or selectively negative skin testing, challenges are also performed when skin testing would not be useful. The drug challenge can either be done as a single dose or graded dose. Dividing the challenge into more than two doses is currently not recommended due to the potential for desensitization or induction of drug tolerance. Occasionally, performing a drug challenge won't be possible. For example, not all sites can do parenteral or intravenous drug challenges, and some medications cannot be given electively or in an outpatient setting. For example, sedatives or paralytics. But for the most part, oral or intramuscular challenges can be safely performed in outpatient settings by trained providers. For the patient who underwent standard penicillin testing and was negative, an oral penicillin such as amoxicillin oral suspension or tablet should be given. Oral amoxicillin suspension requires mixing prior to administration. One full adult dose such as 250 or 500 milligrams is enough to rule out an IgE-mediated allergy. A common two-step amoxicillin challenge is giving 25 to 50 milligrams of amoxicillin followed by a full dose 30 to 60 minutes later if there were no symptoms. During the challenge periods, patients should be checked on and monitored every 15 to 30 minutes with vital signs. One hour after ingestion of one full dose of the drug, if the patient is not symptomatic, then there is no IgE-mediated allergy. The most common reactions reported during drug challenges will be subjective symptoms such as itching without rash, a scratchy throat, or vague gastrointestinal symptoms. If a patient complains of any of these, check their vital signs and examine them, looking for objective signs of allergic reaction and observe for an additional 30 minutes. If at that point there are no objective symptoms, the patient can be reassured that symptoms were not an allergic reaction. The next most common reactions reported during drug challenges will be mild cutaneous reactions that can be treated with antihistamines like cetirizine 10 mg or fexofenadine 180 mg, diphenhydramine 25 to 50 mg can be used but may cause drowsiness. Epinephrine can be used for more diffuse urticarial reactions as this treatment will work more rapidly than antihistamines. If these symptoms are reported, increase the observation period by 30 minutes to make sure there are no signs of a systemic reaction and that the cutaneous reaction subsides. These patients should be labeled as allergic if there are no other plausible explanations. Anaphylaxis typically involves more than two organ systems. Look for cardiovascular, cutaneous, respiratory, or gastrointestinal symptoms. Low blood pressure alone in the setting of a known allergen exposure is also considered anaphylaxis.
If a patient is having an anaphylactic reaction, you've already made sure your anaphylaxis kit is complete and nearby. Lay the patient supine and elevate their legs. Check their airway, breathing, circulation, and vitals. Bring an automated external defibrillator AED if one is available. Give epinephrine and adjunctive medications. Some clinics will activate emergency responses whenever epinephrine is administered, while some practices that are comfortable treating anaphylaxis may activate emergency responses after two doses of epinephrine. IV fluids can be started if they are available and necessary. Once testing is complete, the patient's chart needs to be clearly and thoroughly updated, removing any drug allergy labels that have been disproven by testing and clarifying or highlighting any proven drug allergies. While documentation of your testing procedures and findings in the clinical notes is useful, all findings must be conveyed in the EHR allergy module and clearly communicated to patients. While EHRs vary, we have a best practice for allergy removal. First, edit the allergy entry, adding details of the thorough allergy history you took prior to testing. Use the free text comments box to document the test date and result. Then delete the allergy from the record. Some EHRs will require a reason to delete an allergy. Something like resolution of allergy is appropriate. When testing is negative and the drug allergy label is removed, provide documentation for the patient to share with other medical providers, dentist, and pharmacy. An updated allergy list from your office that the patient can keep in their wallet with their medication list is useful. Finally, discuss the post-clinic follow-up plan with the patient. The patient should call you if they develop new symptoms like itch or rash in the next 24 hours or if the site of a skin test turns hard and itchy at any point after testing. A negative test means that the patient does not have a risk of an immediate reaction, but the risk of delayed rash at the population level. For many antibiotics, this is between 2 and 5%. If a delayed reaction develops, patients should be reassessed for reaction to the potentially implicated drug and cross-reactivity. If testing is positive, again, first edit the allergy record in the EHR, adding the details about the patient's allergy history that you've elicited, and adding the test results that demonstrate allergy, whether it's a positive skin test or a reaction to a drug challenge. Specify the subjective and objective findings of the reaction and your recommendations in the free text comments. Complete the coded EHR fields, which may include date noted, reaction type, and severity. A medical alert device such as a bracelet or documentation on a phone app or emergency smartphone function may be recommended. Second, provide the patient with clear documentation for their outside providers and pharmacy. With the patient's consent, all records should be provided directly to all of their providers and the patient's pharmacy directly from the clinic. This video has focused on immediate hypersensitivity drug allergy testing. While we could not cover every scenario in which immediate hypersensitivity drug allergy testing could be performed, we hope that you have enjoyed it and it has been educational. Please also see our video on delayed hypersensitivity drug allergy testing.